Adjuster TV is brought to you by Adjuster TV Plus. It, there's just something about settling that claim because, one, customer service is at an all-time low. And so if you can do something that yeah. sets you apart, they're going to be like, wait a minute, I'm getting the check right now? Even the contractors, wait a minute, you're going to give her the check and the estimate now? Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, this is wow. shock on their faces. Like, yeah. When I tell the contractor, he's like, all right. He's like, all right, well, I guess, you know, we'll just wait to hear. I'm like, no, I'm just going to go write this one up. And, you're going to do what? You're going to, oh, you are? Oh, okay, great. Well, uh, here, here's a copy of mine. I'm going to, I'll be in my truck. When you're done, just, well, you'll, and I'm like, they get so excited because it's like, uh, the, uh, you know, there's, there's a, just to kind of touch on this really briefly, because I think it's, it's common these days. There's a whole like supplement industry, right? On the, the contractor, the re mm -hmm. insurance restoration thing these days, it wasn't really as prevalent before. Um, but I think that the contractors that, do the best are the ones that recognize that storm restoration work is a volume play and that if they can get the job done, make a, a profit, right? And roofing, those guys, I'm, I'm telling you right now, and if any roofers are watching this, I don't want to hear your sob stories. You got, they have got the, as far as, as from what I know, and I, I did roof sales for a little while, it's, roofing has one of the highest profit margins of any trade. Okay, so don't. I don't want to hear your, your crybaby sob stories about how you know you need drip edge and or ridge cap or whatever. And you know how? Come on, on that the roof is eighteen squares, right? And it's gonna you you can't feed your poor kids and stop. Just stop. If the adjuster's not writing the right estimate to do the, actually do the work, yeah, of course we you know we need to fix that. But if the adjuster's writing it for everything that's there, everything that they could pay for. Using Xactimate pricing, and maybe you, maybe you do negotiate a little bit on access or whatever, you know, or cleanup or debris removal. Just do the work and move on, right? It, the more the more of those you get done, and this goes for everybody, right? This goes for the adjusters, right? The more the the, the carrier doesn't care about how many claims you scope, right? They only care about how many claims you've closed. If I have a company where I have to have a whole division of that, I have to hire a bunch of people to write supplements all the time. That's that's overhead, right? So. I feel like I'm kind of, I mean, maybe the number, I'm sure the numbers shake out, right? To where they make, they make a, a profit off of that or whatever, but is it more than what you would have done if you had just like done it, like come to an agreed scope originally and not jacked. And this is a whole other video. Maybe we just, I'll just stop. But the supplement thing, the bottom line is if you've got the contractor there and you're able to nod your heads and both look at that bottom line price and he says, yep, that looks pretty good. Um, I can do it for that. And everybody's happy right? Then everybody, everybody's happy. Con smart contractors are just going to get on the work and get it done, move on to the next thing. You know, doing insurance restoration work is, a, is different than just being a regular old contractor, a subcontractor. It's, it's its own business model, right? And I think that, you know, guys see money on the table out there and they think, well, we can get, we can get a certain number of percentage of supplements improved or whatever. We can make all this extra money maybe, but it sounds like a lot of extra work to me. I don't know. But what we're talking about here is closing on site. And there's a couple things I want to add before we kind of button this thing up. I think, you know, if, if we look at um, the speed factor, right? I think that if you're sitting at, at the house and you have an appointment in 45 minutes, right? And you're working on the estimate at this house, that to me... I'm not, I don't have sports on. I don't have nothing. I mean, I might be listening to some music in the back, some background music that's not distracting. I can't listen to music with lyrics in it because it's distracting. Right. right. So it's something's, some, whatever, right? So you're sitting in the vehicle and you're, you're running up against a deadline. I feel like that tends to, to, tended to focus me a little bit more and I can get more work done sitting there with a deadline, right? At this, by the same token, um, even if you don't write, write them all up at the house, I still wouldn't write them up at your hotel room. I would go, I always, if I had ones, especially doing daily, I would do this. I would go scope and write it up as far as I could until I ran up against my next appointment and say, hey, listen, I'll give you a call back tomorrow, whatever, right? Leave it with the insured and then do the next one, the next one, the next one. And then I'd go sit at a coffee shop and write them all up, get them all buttoned up. Maybe if it's still early enough, I'll make my phone calls, right? And get them, just get them done, right? And then I go home to my hotel, to the RV or wherever it is, right? And then I'm eating dinner, I'm watching a movie with my wife, you know, put my feet up and going to bed, All right? So I still would do that and, be, and go into a coffee shop or go into the office. I found like my very first storm, my, my manager forced me to stay in the office and write up a bunch of claims. 
And I got way more work done sitting in the office. I would, and I learned, I was like, I'm going to the office to write this up. Not because I need anybody's help. It's there if I do need it. And sometimes I do, but it also focused me because I don't want to get out of here. I don't want to sit around this office, right? I just want to get this work done. There's nothing else I can do, right? If I'm sitting there and this, this is before smartphones, right? So I can't be distracted by anything else. Cause if a manager walks by and you're like, why are you playing angry birds when you should be, you know, right? Your rest, you're playing, what are you even doing here? Right? So it tends, I think those, those kinds of things tend to focus people <clears throat> and it made it easier to get the work done faster instead of going out. So, so I'll put it this way. As far as like, you know, if, if you take two adjusters and they're both going to close three claims a day, right? We'll just use it as an example. I think that the person closing those at the house is going to be able to do those a little bit faster, uh, have a more accurate estimate, right? Um, and have less work to do the next day with phone calls or whatever, um, because they get it all done right at the house. And it's, versus the person that goes and scopes three or four or five, right? Maybe they, they think, oh, I've got all this extra time. I'm not writing them up during the day, but I can only, I can only write three tonight. I scope five today because I got more time, right? And then the next day they scope five. And then the next day they scope five. And maybe they can close three that night and three that night and three that night. Well, they have, by the end of three days, they've got nine claims closed and 15 scoped. Every time they do that, it's going to keep adding more and more. And they're going to start, that's when that, that snowball starts. And that's what we call it being over scoped. So you get to the point where like, I have to take, I have to cancel appointments and, and sit in my hotel room for two days, right? I don't think that's viable. You have a lower quality product. You still have to build time with your schedule, make your phone calls. Um, and you're going to end up uh, having a lower, like a technical accuracy and lower customer service scores because you didn't stay in there in the, the front yard with the homeowner and shake their hand. Coming up on Adjuster TV. 